Here's to whiskey kisses, a peachy taste of sin. End my morning with the smell of brewing on the wind. Here's to lighting bonfires. It's whiskey time. Greetings, whiskey folk, and welcome back to Drinking Out Loud. I am your host, as ever, Adam Bradshaw, and it is the first Friday of the month, and that can mean only one thing. It's time for an SNWS outturn. Now, of course, we're back to doing in-person tastings now. So this is going to be slightly different to how it's been going for the last few months, and just to quickly explain how it works for those of you who are unable to come to the in-person tastings, but uh, still like to catch up with me here online. Uh, basically, we're going to be doing the tastings before the outturns, that outturn preview tastings, if you will. Um, and the people that come to those tastings will get an opportunity to buy some of the whiskies in advance. However, we will be allocating approximately a third of all of the new releases to be released on the first Friday at 10 o'clock in the morning right now, uh, if, if you happen to be cashing it right now. Um, so yeah, you still have a chance to purchase the new whiskies, even if you can't make it to the uh, in-person tastings here at the Strath Ale One and Spirit Merchants, uh, or indeed any of our uh, partner stores. We've got Legacy over in Vancouver, shout out to our uh, friends over the, over the pond. And of course, over in Alberta, we've got Kenston Wine Market in uh, Calgary, and over in Edmonton, we've got Keg and Cork. So yeah, um, I don't know if, uh, if they're able to do their in-person tastings again yet. I know that uh, uh, many of them have much smaller tasting rooms than we do, um, being part of the hotel. We're not hurting for space. Um, so yes, um, hopefully they will be able to do their in-person tastings again soon as well. But yes, congratulations to uh, all of the Victoria members who actually came and tried these whiskies with me in person yesterday and the day before. It was um, fantastic. I say it was fantastic. I'm sure it will be. I'm recording this before they happen. So yeah, I'm hedging my bets. It's probably going to be fantastic. <laughs> anyway, on with the show. This is the August outturn for the SWS, the power pairings outturn. So uh, they're, they're trying to uh, tell us to feel the flavor force and get creative in the kitchen. We're encouraging members to explore food and whiskey pairings alongside this month's new cask. So I'm going to try my best to remember with each of these uh, whiskies to try and think of the kind of food that I would like to eat with them. Um, which actually sounds like a, a wonderful challenge. I will, uh, yeah, I look forward to doing that. Uh, this is the 118th outturn in the SNWS Canada. And uh, yeah, six brand new whiskies. Let's get right into them. Whiskey number one today is called Varnished Crumpets. The panel discovered a rather more punchy and fulsome example of this stalwart make. Lots of old varnish, buttered crumpets, hand lotion, talcum powder, white flowers, stone fruits, plum jam, burlap, white asparagus, and some sweeter notes of desiccated coconut, orange, and dark chocolate. Water brought out millionaire shortbread, rum truffles, a soft leather tobacco pouch, and toasted fennel seed. 
In the mouth we found hibiscus tea, lemon bonbons, children's cough medicine, pipe tobacco, herbal bitters, apricot and almond ice cream. With reduction we noted Madeira cake, lemon cordial, five spice, and pan au chocolat. A wee a medical hint in the aftertaste. Sounds like a wonderful way to start off the day. Varnished crumpets. Crumpets aren't really a big thing over here, but you can find them in thrifties, so if you are intrigued to find out uh, what, what a crumpet is all about, it's, it's, it's kind of like a thick, it's kind of like a thick pancake that you can put in the toaster that's full of holes. Um, those holes are fantastic for capturing honey or Nutella or whatever you want to spread over the top of it. Uh, yeah. Uh, looking forward to this one. So this is 12 years aged. It was distilled on the 10th of June 2008 from the Speyside region, and it is from a Refill X Bourbon Hogshead, um, bottled at a wonderful ABV of 55.4%, uh, an outturn of one of 279 bottles, and this is cask number 41.136. Lovely. Yeah, I've had a few 41s here in uh, NWS Canada. Um, it's, I feel like it's been a while though. It's, uh, you know, I can't, I can't think of if we've had a 41 in the last year, actually. It might, might, we might be having a bit of a drought of 41s, which is thankfully over. That was a, a nice high-pitched squeaky one there. I don't know what happened there. Alrighty. So, one thing that is also uh, a little bit different right now than that has been in the last few months is these whiskies are all ready for sale. You don't have to wait for me to push a big red invisible button. I don't know why it's red, it's invisible, it's not really any colour, but the, the big button. Uh, I'm not pushing a big button today. These are all ready, all available at SNWS, um, at strath, uh, strathlicker.com forward slash SNWS. So, uh, yeah, if uh, if you want to jump ahead and you know take a look at the whole lineup, I already teased it in the in the intro there. Um, and if you want to jump ahead, you know, pause the video now. And if there's anything that you know right off the bat that you want to place an order for, go ahead. Uh, come back to the video though, and uh, I encourage you to uh, um, to, to watch through and uh, see what. Uh, my responses are to some of the whiskies that you're on the fence about, or maybe even some of the whiskies that you normally wouldn't think about getting, but um, there's uh, there's more to some of these whiskies than might meet the eye, let's say. Mm. Lovely, lovely way to start off. I, I do I do enjoy a nice um, spirit forward whiskey, especially when it's a spirit um, as, as rich and Oysterous, I want to say, as uh, as a forty-one. This is one of the one of the meatier new makes in the Speyside region. I'm getting I'm getting some really nice sort of tart fruits in this right now. On the nose, I'm getting like gooseberries, um, maybe even something like a tropical, maybe kiwi. Hmm. Which is actually a Chinese gooseberry, I think, is his technical term. Yeah, and then then there's that um, yeah slightly more pancakey, I guess, crumpet sort of uh, floweriness, flowery in a you know F L O U R, not an F L O W E R way. <laughs> Although it does mention white flowers as well. I'm not getting too much of a floral thing from here. I've got to say, I agree with the stone fruit, more of an apricot thing rather than a plum for me. But yeah, absolutely that kind of uh, that kind of range. It's quite decadent on the nose. There's quite a lot happening. Hmm. Oh yeah, pastries. I get the pan of chocolate. They mentioned Madeira cake as well. Hmm. It's reminding me of something I had recently. I can't quite remember what it's called here. It's a, it's a type of cake that, uh, that, that, that is seemingly quite popular in Canada that I don't, don't feel like I uh, came across back home. Um, you can get it in thrifties, it's, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's round and squidgy. Like, I'm just describing cake, aren't I? Um, it'll come to me, I'm sure. Hmm, <laughs> lovely. So for those of you who aren't familiar with uh, Distillery 41, this is a Dal Ewan. Um, Dal Ewan, I have to admit, this is one of my uh, one of, one of my whiskey secrets from when I was first got into uh, whiskey and uh, bef before I knew as much as I do now, which is still very little on the grand scheme of things. Um, but I saw that when I saw this written down for the first time, I was like, oh, that's how you spell Dalwini. No, no, Dalguin and Dalwini are very different. <laughs> um, 
And actually, Dalyuin used to be the biggest malt distillery in Scotland in the late 1890s. Um, and today, we're going to be talking about the some of the people uh, involved in some of the distilleries that we're presenting, because um, people are a very big part of whiskey, uh, not just in the creating, but in the promotion, in the enjoyment of whiskey. Um, but we, we, whiskey's not the same without the people, right? It's not whiskey till it's shared. That's that's what I always say. Um, so we're talking about a couple of other people. And for Dal Ewan, it's kind of tricky. Um, I, I, I can't seem to find much about the team at Dal Ewan. It's not one of those distilleries that shouts about itself much. It goes mostly into, uh, the, you know, the, the blended whiskies, uh, mostly into Jolly Walker, I think. Uh, but what I can tell you, one person in particular who is a legend historically in the whiskey industry um, is an architect by the name of Charles Doig. And he was the person who, uh, who decided it would be a very good idea to put a pagoda style roof on the top of a still house. And that was a very, very good idea. Um, and in fact, Dal Ewan was the very first distillery to do that, which is kind of cool. Mm. What food then? Would I pair with this whiskey? What would I, what would I want to be eating right now if we're drinking this? Well, it's it's one of those things where you know, do you go with something that would complement the flavors that's in a similar ballpark, or do you, or do you go with something completely different? And honestly, what I want with this whiskey right now is a Sunday roast. I want roast beef and Yorkshire puddings, maybe some parsnips and carrots and things like that. Um, I think the big. A uh, big, beautiful, meaty, fruity spirit that's uh, that's present in this glass would stand up to those flavors, those those sort of rich, fattier flavors, and uh, I think it would go really, really well. So yes, I'm, I think this is the perfect whiskey for a Sunday roast, a big, big roast beef, or maybe roast lamb if that's your uh, if that's your calling. Mm. Lovely varnished crumpets available uh, right now. So long as it's not already sold out at strathlicker.com forward slash SNWS for the price of one hundred and seventy nine dollars and ninety one cents. Uh, one seventy nine ninety one, which means, of course, that that is only available to existing members. It is not over the one hundred and eighty dollar mark. And I know it's only nine cents, but uh, most of the people watching this are members. And it's in your best interest that I'm doing this because I'm making sure that you guys have a best opportunity of picking up these uh, well priced whiskies. Uh, yeah. So new members, new members. Sorry. Um, even if you offer to pay that extra nine cents, you've got to buy another bottle before you can buy this one. One seventy nine ninety one, fantastic, uh, fantastic deal for this uh, twelve year old Dal Ewan. That's Lancha Bar. What's uh, what's coming up next? Well, I'll tell you. The next one is called Major Sweetie. The nose oozed and schmoozed with sweet vanilla cream, youthful sauternes, creme caramel, and then trampled ferns, mossy bark, white truffle oil, and cookie dough. Hints of white chocolate mousse, mineral oil, and new leather were also detected. With water, we found fragrant sandalwood, tea tree oil, butter mints, leather gardening gloves, and muesli run through with flower honey. I, can you make honey without flowers being involved? I, I don't know, specifically flower honey, not not flower honey, I guess. The palate neat was similarly sweet with pineapple syrup, precious nectars, pollens, melon cordial, lime curds, heather honey, and candy floss. Some buttermilk and boiled lemon sweets too. Water brought out cream soda, rose water, pineapple upside down cake, sunflower oil, and peach schnapps. Wee touches of Irish coffee, cinnamon sugar, and a kiss of juniper in the aftertaste. Mmm. Lovely. Well then, major sweetie. <laughs> a regimental and tight-knit sweetness marches through its core of this beautiful dram from nose to finish. Bountiful confectionery, flowers and honey. Lovely. So this is Society Cask number 9.201, an outturn of 195 bottles. Uh, this is a sweet, fruity and mel... Uh, I was almost said sweet, fruity and melon. No, sweet, fruity and mellow. Uh, although melon was a tasting note. Sweet, fruity and mellow whiskey, uh, distilled on the 11th of September 2003, aged for 17 years. Uh, it was distilled in the Speyside region, and it was uh, from a first fill ex-bourbon barrel. First fill for 17 years, that's uh, that's quite something. And this is bottled at 57.2% ABV. So that's a, a almost 2% higher than the last uh, whiskey, but five years older. Interesting. 
must be a slightly different climate, a slightly different area of space side this one's from. Lovely. Well, no time like the present. Time for some unbottling. Hmm. Delightful. All right, what can I pick out on here? Creme caramel, absolutely. Yeah, there's a nice sort of custardy sweetness to this one on the nose. I like the white chocolate mousse. That's, that, that one stood out to me in the toasting notes as something I wanted to look out for, and I, I think I'm getting something along those lines. Maybe not white chocolate, but there's something, something moussey. I'm the same mineral oil. I'm actually specifically getting, um, what's that called? The, the, the um, avocado oil. It's a type of oil that I was once told was very good with steak, and it, it is, but it's not necessarily sure it's worth the price. Yeah, it smells like avocado oil. That's really cool. Muesli run through with flour honey. Yeah, I'm getting a, yeah, maybe a sort of, it's definitely a sweetened muesli. If it is muesli, it's more like an alpen. Mm. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, that is good. Ooh. Mmm, it's powdered lemon bonbons. And what's that? Um, mmm, a J2O. I don't know, that's uh, something that I haven't thought about in a long time. Uh, J2O was what you, what you ordered in a pub in England if you, or Scotland, or, or Wales, I guess, probably. I've never had one in Wales, but um, it's what you order in a pub if you're, if you're the DD. It's kind of like posh orange juice. It comes, comes in a bottle, you can pretend you're, like you're drinking a beer, but it's, you know, orange. Um, but it comes in all kinds of flavors. This one reminds me an awful lot of the, um, there was like, I think it was a mango passion fruit or something along those lines, but the mango-y one. It has mangoes and peaches on the palate. It's lovely. Mmm, and honeydew melon. Mmm. Oh yeah. This is a major sweetie. Mmm. Distillery number nine um, is very much referenced in the name of this one. Uh, this is a Glen Grant. And um, of course, Major Grant is uh, the obvious person to talk about when talking about Glen Grant, but I'm not going for the obvious because I recently listened to a fantastic podcast, a podcast that I'm going to give a shout out to right now because you guys should go listen to it as well. Did you know the SNWS has their own podcast? Uh, Whiskey Talk is the name of it. This was on episode 27, and you can find Whiskey Talk on uh, Google Podcasts is where I found it. I'm sure you can find it on iTunes and all kinds of different podcast sites. Great, great to check out. Um, a, a little interestingly um, varied in the length of each episode. They've not quite got that down pat yet. Some are five minutes, some are an hour. I don't know what's going on there, but uh, I mean, I'm one to talk. It's the same with these uh, <laughs> these YouTube episodes, I've, I guess. It's, you know. Um, but recently, uh, episode 27 was released, and that was an absolutely wonderful interview with a gentleman called Dennis Malcolm. Uh, and Dennis actually started working at Glen Grant when he was 15 years old. Um, he was an apprentice cooper at age 15. Now, 60 years later, he's actually Scotland's longest serving distiller which is super cool, which means he absolutely definitely was involved in the making of this whiskey, and he's still involved in the whiskey being made right now at Glen Grant. Glen Grant, of course, a fantastically well-respected distillery, uh, especially in Italy, very, very popular in Italy. Um, I discovered apparently they have a five-year-old version of Glen Grant, which gets uh, shipped out exclusively to Italy. That's something I learned in the podcast. Very worth checking into that one. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, top stuff. If you're looking for something mm, with not just a, quite a lot of age, but a very good balance of cask influence and spirit influence, this tastes, I would say, older than 17 years because of that first Felix bourbon barrel. It's got even more flavor out of the wood than it normally would after 17 years. Most 17-year-old whiskeys are, you know, second or third fill barrels these days. This is as good as many 25, 30-year-olds in that kind of style that I've had recently. And yeah, 
a fantastic price for that, to be honest. It's uh, available right now while stocks last at strathalica.com forward slash SMWS for $248.61. $248.61. Good stuff. Good stuff indeed. All right, let's look in the handy little, handy dandy little booklet here and see what's next. Next, we're going for a juicy oakum vanilla whiskey called Four Layers and Fudge Frosted. Mm. A wonderfully inviting nose neat, pear ta uh, coconut biscuits, orange fudge, buttered toffee, as well as creamy dark chocolate hazelnut spread. Uh, thick texture with a long wood spice backbone, plenty of fruits of the forest, and a chocolate drink made from cocoa, banana, cereals, honey, and sugar. Water added a desiccated coconut, vanilla custard, and chocolate brownies, but at the same time, a plate full of tagliatelle pasta in a rich creamy black truffle sauce. Silky smooth on the palate like four layer fudge frosted chocolate and vanilla sponge cake, coconut lime macaroons with white chocolate in the finish, dark chocolate chip ginger nuts. All right. That sounds like all kinds of wonderful desserts. Four layers and fudge, frost fudge frosted. Decadence. So this is um, cask number 12.50, an outturn of 182 from that cask. It was distilled on the 29th of September 2009. It was aged for 11 years. It's from the Speyside region, and it is from a First Phil X bourbon barrel. Another First Phil X bourbon. 59.6% ABV, juicy oak and vanilla. Yeah. All right, this, uh, this sounds like a fantastic number 12. Let's get cracking. I've had a couple of number 12s recently, and they have certainly not disappointed. I'm sure this one will continue that trend. You know, breakfast cereals come up an awful lot in whiskey tastings. I mean, you know, whiskey being grain-based cereals, it makes sense, the sweetness from the from the oak. But this one is a very specific breakfast cereal. I don't I can't think of coming up in notes before. I'm sure it must have been at some point. It's a breakfast cereal that is beloved around the world. Cocoa Pops. This is I, I think I'm fairly sure we have Cocoa Pops in Canada. They might be called something else. You know, they're like Rice Krispies, but they're chocolate. I think they might be called Cocoa Puffs or Choco Puffs or something here, now it's come to think of it. But yeah, Cocoa Pops for, for those British people amongst us, which is mostly gonna be me, I guess. And I, I don't know, there's a couple of British uh, British members in the, uh, in, in, in the local chapter. I can think of at least two or three. Um, so to, to you guys, Cocoa Pops, remember those? Great. Um, but you know how when you leave them in uh, in the milk and the milk turns all milk chocolatey and it's yeah, it's like it's like having your own milkshake in the morning. It smells like that. It's great. Ooh. Hmm. That is a decadent nose. It's like the um it's it's like that fudge frosting you can get in a spray can. <laughs> oh my. It actually smells like um, Ben and Jerry's uh, fudge brownie ice cream. That's quite something, that is. Hmm. All right. Hmm. There goes the banana. And there is a savory peppery note as well. You can kind of see where they're going with the whole pasta kind of uh, thing. Hmm. You know, I, I think I already messed up and forgot to say what meal I would uh, have the last whiskey with. Major Sweetie. I don't know. I think Major Sweetie is, is calling for some kind of uh, picnic. I, I, I would say a nice uh, ham sandwich picnic for Major Sweetie. This one, though. I think this would, it'd be really hard to put this with something savory. It's just so... Hmm. I'd almost want to have this at a special brunch and have it with something that's sweet but not fudgy sweet, you know, like a, a more of a fruity sweet. Something, having this with waffles with whipped cream and strawberries, that's what I would put this with. Hmm. 
the perfect single malt whiskey to go with Belgian waffles. Oh yeah. My, my. That is fudge. That is fudge-tacular. Um, mm. Wow. Okay. I'm starting to get more things, but they're all <laughs> on the same line. I'm getting Oreos now. Hmm. Maybe even Fudgios, which I was recently introduced to. And they're dangerous. Hmm. Hmm. I'm going to put a wee, wee drop of water in this one. It's 59.6, so it uh, can certainly take a couple of drops. Hmm. Let me, let me tell you about Distillery 12, though, in the meantime, I'll let the water settle. Uh, Distillery 12 is a cool one. It is Ben Riek, um, fantastic space side distillery that was um, very much designed to be flexible, to be able to do peated and unpeated and have a spirit that would work with all kinds of different woods uh, for fillings for, for, for blending houses, basically. Um, However, the, the revival of the distillery is very much thanks to one person, Billy Walker. Um, but these days, there's another absolute legend of the whiskey industry at the helm of Ben Riek, and that is Rachel Barry, who, after graduating in chemistry, worked with the late Jim Swan at the Scotch Whiskey Research Institute before moving on to Ardbeg and Glenmorangie, and then Bowmore, uh, Glengarry, and Ochentoshan, and then finally now on to Ben Riek, uh, Glendronach, and Glenglassach, which... That is a that is a mad good list of distilleries to be involved with, and yeah, Rachel Barry has done an absolutely incredible job, um, sort of keeping that uh, keeping that quality and consistency going at those three distilleries. Mm. Oh yeah. Interesting. With a touch of water, and again, how much of it is the water and how much is my you know, palate opening up more to it as well, it's hard to say, but I'm getting more of those darker notes now that I wasn't really getting so much before. Um, the fudge is giving way to more of a dark chocolate, and yeah, that sort of ginger nut cookie is definitely definitely showing its head. Uh, so yeah, this is already available, strathlicker.com forward slash SMWS. Uh, if there are any left, I, I very much... Uh, uh, recommend it um, if if this is the kind of flavor profile that speaks to you personally. It's if yeah, I mean if you like fudge, this is a this is a fudge fudge packed whiskey, um, and it can be yours for one eighty four twenty six, which means it is just over the one hundred and eighty barrier. Which means that anyone who is watching this who is not yet a Scotch Malt Whiskey Society member can join for the very first time by purchasing one of these bottles. And you can do that, there's a little form that you fill out on the page when you're purchasing one of these bottles. It'll ask if you're a member or not, and if you say no, uh, for this whiskey it'll it'll give you a little sort of basically questionnaire of, well, if, have you ever been a member before? And you say no, and you say, would you like to join with the bottle? And you say yes, yes I would. And then it'll just ask for some basic information, and just like that, you're now a member of the SNWS, and you can take part in all of these tastings in person, online, and uh, purchase any bottle that you wish. Mm. Speaking of purchasing any bottle that you wish, the next one is going to be a very fun one to present because it's a big, yellow, important box selling me to limit this to one bottle per member. This next one is an award-winning whiskey, uh, and it is also under the $180 mark, so uh, cor current existing members only. Um, the next one's called The Queen of Tarts. A vividly exotic aroma initially. One full of rum barba, pineapple chunks in syrup, dark fruits, toasted oak, and dried red apple rings. Further notes of burnt caramel, candied orange peel, and demerara sugar. With water, there was more baked pastry richness, glossy custard with sweet wines, maple, pecan, danish, and stewed apple cake drizzled with butterscotch. The palate opened with abundant dark fruits, ripe plums, strawberry jam with almonds, and eucalyptus cough drops with reduction. The panel noted salted caramel, gingerbread, and orange marmalade, along with grilled pineapple, rum and raisin fudge, and mango jam. This was matured for 10 years in a bourbon hogshead, before being transferred into a first fill STR barrique. And it won the Chairman's Trophy finalist 94 points um, and was awarded an excellent, highly recommended status at the 2021 Ultimate Spirits Challenge in the United States, uh, which is 
<laughs> one hell of a mouthful of an award, but uh, very, very prestigious. Um, so, you know, you can understand it's uh, being limited to one model per member quite strictly on this one. Yeah, 112. Mm. One of many codes from Loch Lomond, um, a great, great distillery. You, you guys have heard me say many times how much I love Loch Lomond and how it's probably my desert island uh, distillery because they've got so much uh, variety that they can produce there. This sounds really, really cool. Um, let's see what's going on. This one's from the deep, rich and dried fruits flavor category. Deep, rich color. Deep, rich nose. Ooh, that does have a thick, rummy kind of uh, nose to it. Interesting. Oh, grilled pineapple. Is this pineapple chunks in syrup? No, the, for me, this is fresh pineapple, straight off of a slightly verging on overripe pineapple. You, you just slice a big ring out of it and stick it on the barbecue. That, that is the nose for me on that. That is cool. And apple chips. You know, the, the, like the dried apple. Oh yeah. Ooh. Oh, big flavor on there. Mmm. Rum and raisin ice cream. Big rum and raisin ice cream for me. Mmm. A bit of marzipan. Mmm. And almost a sort of, uh, what am I thinking here? I'm thinking of a sweet wine. It's not port, it's not sauternes. Or is it sauternes? Maybe it's sauternes. No, I'm thinking of Madeira. Madeira. Mmm. An apple strudel with custard. That is, that is a mighty fine whiskey. And one that I have to say, I would be very, I would be very shocked to find out that this was a Loch Lomond or an Inch Murrin specifically from Loch Lomond. It doesn't, it doesn't feel like their normal sort of, I always think of Loch Lomond as being a little, you know, rough and ready. Um, I, I like their sort of slight ruggedness. Um, this feels very refined, I have to say. But it's also taking on a lot of character from that STR cask. And an STR, the person I'm going to talk about with this one is uh, much less so of a uh, person from the distillery, but from a person from the cask, um, the creator of the STR, Jim Swan, uh, the late great Jim Swan. Um, he created the shave, toasted and recharred cask where they take these uh, red wine bariques and then, uh, yeah, shave, toast and rechar them. <laughs> exactly, it's right there in the name. Um, and he is just an absolute legend in the whiskey industry. Anyone that has ever worked with him has amazing things to say about his knowledge of wood. He was, uh, he was once quoted, I think, I think it might have been Rachel Barry actually who quoted him as being the uh, the Einstein of whiskey barrels, <laughs> um, which is you know quite a compliment. Um, he's he's worked with so many distilleries as well, and not just in Scotland. He's one of these big believers in the international single malt scene. So he's worked in yes in Scotland. He worked with Kilcommon very famously. Uh, they've done a lot of STR casks, um, but he worked with England. He worked with the Cotswolds Distillery. He was the guy that worked with Penderyn who persuaded Penderin to use Madeira casks as their um, sort of standard expression, which is absolutely nuts. I'm questioning myself right now, as I said Madeira, it felt weird, because it's even Madeira or Sauternes though, it's one of those unexpected cask types, it's one of those two that they use for their standard expression. Um, also Cavalan over, uh, over in Taiwan there, and also a distillery which um, our Dram Association members are going to become familiar with quite soon, hopefully, uh, Milk and Honey. Uh, milk and honey, I uh, I managed to try a sample of from one of our club members who brought some back with them. They're an up and coming distillery in Israel, um, interestingly enough. 
So yeah, he's he's influenced not only the Scotch whiskey world, but the international single malt whiskey world. Um, and of course, not only that, he also worked with um, Victoria Caledonia, um, who used the STR casks. And they've even sort of renamed the STR casks in a sense as well. When I did the Cali Academy over there with uh, with Macaloni, uh, and I should say it's not Victoria Caledonia anymore, it's Macaloni's Caledonia, they changed the name. But when I did their their little course, um, they introduced STR casks to us, uh, not as uh, <laughs> shaved, toasted and recharred, but as Swan's Toasted Reserve, uh, which I kind of like. It's like a, a good homage to the, the, the guy that made them. Um, so yeah, Swan's Toasted Reserve, if you will. Mm. Yeah, gorgeous whiskey and an absolutely astounding price for it. This 12-year-old award-winning STR Barrique finished whiskey is $169.48. Existing members, have a crack at it. Go for it. Um, it's available right now at strathlicker.com forward slash SMWS for a very limited time only. I can only assume that this one probably sold out at the two tastings. Um, so that would mean there's only three or four bottles left for online. Go get them while you can. I will sit here and wait for you. No, I should probably just carry on, shouldn't I? Um, the next whiskey we've got is uh, quite tantalizingly called Dark and Filthy. A strong maritime scene conveyed sea kelp and shellfish before burning heather drew us into a dark place of dirty engine rags, chimney soot, and thick tar. The palate was equally as rich, with sticky textures that merged herbal cough medicine with prune syrup and salted blackcurrant jam. Dense plumes of smoke billowed from burning wood and bonfire ash, whilst nutty cereals came with a squeeze of lemon. A dash of water brought us tarry ropes and brine, along with oily smoked mackerel and a few spent fireworks. The heavy theme continued with thick treacle mixed with soot and ash while seafood was served on charred banana skins, along with a glass of Madeira wine. Glorious. So, we're, uh, we're into the, the peated realm, but this one is uh, oily and coastal, is its uh, categorization. Uh, before I get into this, I just want to mention, yes, I'm very bad at remembering to do these special things, aren't I? I, I forgot to sort of come up with a, 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 a meal that I would enjoy with that last whiskey. Um, Queen of Tarts. I would think something nice and meaty and spiced. I would go for um, the, the quintessential Canadian uh, pie, um, which I'm forgetting the name of right now. That, that mincemeat pie that uh, they have in Quebec, um, or maybe it's New Brunswick. Um, Tortière. I would have it with a tortier. Anyway, back to Dark and Filthy. This is cask 42.51, an outturn of 213 from the Highland region, it says on the bottle, but I think, um, I think I can let slip that it's not just a Highland, but also an island. It is a refill ex bourbon barrel. It was aged for 14 years, distilled on the 5th of October 2006. It is 56.1% ABV and this is again a, a big yellow box, a limit one bottle per member. We, we think this one's gonna go down well too. Um, I believe Robin Kelly must have, uh, must have sampled this and thought, ooh, ooh, that's good. And uh, wanted to make sure that we spread the love. So yeah, 42, it's been a while. We used to have quite a few 42s here in the SNWS. So they were very, very popular as well. And since they disappeared, their, their popularity has only gone up in, uh, in, in, in non s us bottlings. They're, uh, yeah, we, we, we finally got their official bottlings on the shelf here in uh, BC, um, although I think we've only seen one or two. Um, and yeah, they're, they're just a very, very highly regarded distillery. In fact, it was only very, very recently that this distillery got knocked off of the uh, Dram Association's podium as the highest rated whiskey um, in the history of the Dram Association. And it took the it took a Klein Leash um, Select Reserve and a Brora 38-year-old to knock that one into third place, which is saying something. Um, and yeah, this is probably going to be on a similar level of quality. Oh, so, yeah, I mean, I'm going to open the bottle and then I'll tell you who 42 is, shall I? Ooh. That's pale, ooh. That's pale straw colour, and that is a nose. 
Ooh, blimey, that is such a departure from the last whiskey. Oh, crab buckets. It, it makes me feel like I should be sat on a pier with, uh, with a big crab line, kind of throwing crabs into buckets. Mmm, kelp, absolutely, yeah. Burning heather. Dirty engine rags, yeah. And one of the notes in here, they, they mention tarry ropes. And I have to admit, that was one of the most embarrassing moments of my life when I was staring at one of the tasting notes. I think it was actually a name of a Lafroig or something early on in my SNWS presenting career, where I was like, tarry ropes. Does anyone in the, in, in the crowd know what a tarry rope is? Like, oh, tarry rope. I'm a fool. Anyway, tarry ropes. It smells like tarry ropes. Mmm. Ooh, and the taste reminds me of that, um, I forget what it's actually called, the, the soap that's made out of coal. Very popular in Yorkshire. Mmm. Oh, wow. But it's got this really, it doesn't really mention it in here, but I'm finding a really sort of delicate sort of elderflower thing going on, like behind all of the big, dark, dirty. It's like there's a, this... There's something precious and beautiful growing in the corner of this damp, dark, dirty room. Mm. I'm definitely going elderflower, yeah. I'm definitely going with elderflower. That's really good. That is bloody excellent, actually. Blackcurrant jam. Damson jam I'm going to go with, actually. That's what it reminds me of, damson jam. Mm. Dark and filthy. Oh, it is. All right, well, 42 is a little distillery on the Isle of Mull called Tobermory. However, this is not a Tobermory. To the best of my knowledge, I can, I'm fairly sure, unless my, um, um, unless my tongue is deceiving me, I'm, I'm getting a hint of peat on this, which means this is none other than a Lechegue. Ah, uh, Tobermory, I think is now 50% of the time um, makes peated malts and 50% of the time makes unpeated malt. So when it's unpeated, they go by their own name, the eponymous Tobermory single malt. And when it's peated, they go by Lechaig, which is L-E-D-A-I-G, I think is the spelling. Look, always looks like it should be said Ledeig, but yeah, it's Lechaig, apparently. Um, hmm. And their head distiller is a woman called Julianne Fernandez, uh, another alumni of the Scottish Whiskey Research Institute. Um, but unlike Rachel Barry, um, yeah, Julianne's uh, background was not in chemistry. In fact, uh, she went to university for forensic science, um, which is pretty cool and actually makes an awful lot of sense if you think about it. Uh, I'm sure that a lot of the stuff um, that a lot of the way of thinking, of course, especially, uh, that she learnt for forensic science is now used in her approach to whiskey making. Uh, yeah, Julianne Fernandez. I look forward to hopefully meeting her one day. I, I, I definitely want to quiz her on uh, how, how much her forensic science background comes into play. Maybe she can use her forensic, her forensic science background to figure out what that um, beautiful thing growing in the corner that I mentioned was uh, in this deep, dark, filthy room. <laughs> it's a mystery. I'm, going, I'm thinking elderflower still, but I'm not quite there. This, if you do manage to uh, taste this one, either at the in-person tastings or if you buy a bottle, drop us a note on the uh, comments section. And tell me if you can find that as well, because mm, it's, it's fleeting, but it's... It's like that whole... Like, what, what is it, something about fairies where if you look at them, they disappear, so you only see them for a split second? It feels like that. Dark and filthy. What a lovely, lovely return to form for Le Chegue. It's been a long time since we've seen them here in the SNWS, and I am mm, ecstatic that they're back. This 14-year-old uh, Le Chegue can be yours for two twenty eight sixty one while stocks last at strathlicker.com forward slash SMWS. Best of luck, members. Mm. Last of all today, the, f the sixth and final of our new releases is called 
wine and brine. But I caught myself, I haven't told you what meal this would go with, and that, that is the theme today. We are, we are doing power pairings. So what would I put with this lechaic? I, honestly, would go with cheese. I would put like a nice sort of, a mellow sort of Wensleydale or something, maybe with some cranberries in it. I would go, I'd, yeah, I, I think this would go really well with a cheese and cracker course. Maybe, maybe with a little bit of um, Serrano ham or something as well. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Anyway, I said, finishing off the last whiskey today, the last of the new releases is wine and brine from the peated flavor profile. A beautiful initial nose of beach sand, kelp, mineral salts, iodine drops, sandalwood, and sea greens. This coastal buzz of rock pools, fresh mussels, brine mixed with olive oil, chopped chives, and preserved lemons. With water, we felt the fizzy kiss of oysters and champagne. Then aged lambic ales, whelk and scallops grilling over hot coals, sea urchin mashed potato, and fresh lime juice. The mouth glistened with boiled lime sweets, barley sugar, smoked white fish, caraway liqueur, and salted licorice, earl grey tea, old rope, and lanolin. Reduction gave us peat ash, fresh tuna steak, licorice ice cream, pork scratchings, pickled shellfish, boiler fumes, and mercurochrome. This was matured for six years in a bourbon hogshead before it was transferred into a refill Madeira hogshead. Ooh, yes it was. This is a 53. We love our 53s here at the SNWS. This is an Isla. It's uh, seven years aged. It was distilled on the 7th of March, 2012. Um, so close to being distilled on my birthday, 7th of March instead of the 6th. But, you know, it's seven years old, 7th of March. I, kinda, I, I like the 7-7 seven, seven there. It's a, it's a lucky whiskey for those of you who believe in the luck of the number 7. Um, 261 bottles, an ABV, a powerful ABV of 61 even. 61.0% ABV. Super cool. Oh, going in for it. This this is going to be neat. I my my ears pricked up as soon as I uh, as soon as I read the uh, the aged lambic ale because I love a good lambic, and it's one of the things honestly, and I mean no disrespect here. Um, I um I've yet to be like wholeheartedly thoroughly impressed with any local sour beers. Uh, I say local anywhere in North America, really, or anywhere outside of Belgium, because I grew up um, going to Belgium for my summer holidays every year. In fact, when I was a teenager, I used to go to Belgium for an entire month at a time and go and uh, volunteer uh, to do manual labor for a convent in Belgium in exchange for room and board. It was great. Um, so I I love lambic beers, and actually, now that Brett is in charge of the uh, the beers here in, uh, in at the Strath, um, I I've, I I might have persuaded him to up the lambic game. So we have some absolutely fantastic lambic beers in stock right now at Strath Ale Wine and Spirit Merchants, or available at strathlego.com. Just just search lambic, I guess. Um, it should show you a couple of options. But this, ooh, I'm very much looking forward to. I don't have to look forward for long because it is now in my glass. Ooh, and that smells good. I love a Madeira cask whiskey. It gives a nice, interesting... Um, Madeira usually brings um, sort of golden plum or apricot kind of notes to the whiskey for me. That's what I sort of often associate with Madeira cask. That, that is 53, for those who don't know already, is a Kalila. And this is just Kalila-tastic. It's, it's Kalila. It's just so purely salt and vinegar chip Kalila. This is, you know, bacon and lemon juice Kalila. This is classic, classic Kalila with that just that little bit of something extra, which doesn't, it's not, definable yet on the nose, but hopefully on the palate, I'll be able to narrow it down, but I'm assuming that's what the Madeira Hogshead's coming in to play with. Oh yeah. Ooh. It's 
I recently tried at the recommendation of uh, a certain uh, blender from uh, Compass Box, who uh, I interviewed recently on, on this channel. Uh, I recently tried a, an SNWS Kalula, actually, a Kalula with a Picoule de Pinay, as uh, she recommended, um, which is a dry white wine. Really, really good, actually. I'm, I'm so used to having whiskey with beer that having a whiskey and a wine together was actually astounding. And I'm, I'm, I'm picking up those same kind of notes that I enjoyed in that combination in this one whiskey, which is kind of cool. That being said, screw pairing this with a meal. Pair this with a Picpoule de Pinay. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. Yeah. I'm... Honestly, if you're a whiskey fan and you haven't had a Kalila by now, then honestly, you're doing something wrong. Kalila is one, one of the first peated whiskies that you should be trying. For me, it's the quintessential Isla. Um, if, you, if you know you love Kalila, this is a damn good Kalila, and I can practically guarantee that you will love this whiskey. If, for some miracle, you've never had a Kalila before, Kalila before if you like the idea of taking a big chunk of bacon, grilling it up with some scallops, dousing it in lemon juice, um, and then setting the whole thing on fire a little bit. This, this is, this is that. Oh yeah. There's a sort of an interesting matcha like a matcha latte thing going on on the, on the back palette on this one, which is kind of nice as well. Mm. It has all of the hallmarks that you expect with the Kalila, but it's playful, it's interesting. It's got variety going on in this. And again, that's probably an awful lot down to the Madeira Hogshead. Mm. So who should we talk about when it comes to Kalila? Um, we, we, we've talked about the people behind uh, many of the distilleries, and uh, we've talked about architects, and we've uh, talked about the, uh, the the cask architect, I guess, as well, with Jim Swan. Um, well, much like Jim Swan, actually, the person that I'm about to, uh, about to talk about has worked around the world and for many different distilleries. And of course, I'm talking about the local legend. Uh, he, he, I believe he still lives in Victoria. I haven't seen him for a little while because of the pandemic, but hopefully Mike Nicholson still lives here. Mike is a fantastic fella, um, a great presenter, um, taught me an awful lot about whiskey. Um, and he's the former uh, distiller at Lagavulin, um, of course, Kalila, Glen Kinchy, Blair Athol, Royal Lochnagar, also Shelter Point and Victoria Caledonia. <laughs> um, he, he didn't come here to retire. Um, and yeah, oh sorry, Macaloni's Caledonia as it's now called. I still can't get used to the new name. It's probably not even new at this point. It's probably been like that for three years, I'm not sure. But uh, yes, Macaloni's Caledonia. I'll, I'll get there one day, Graham, sorry. Uh, yeah, Mike ah, makes fantastic whiskies. I can't, I, I know he told me at one point what years he was at Kalila, so I could look out for Kalilas that were made uh, whilst, what, during his tenure there. Um, I can't, I honestly can't remember though. Um, my brain's a bit of a sieve these days. I should have written it down. Um, Mike, if you happen to watch this, drop us a note. I'd love to, I'd love to know. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was longer than seven years ago though, so I don't think this is one of yours. Still though, I'm sure your influence is uh, still able to shine through. Hmm. Spot on, good stuff. And this, mm, mm, I almost feel like I should be putting in a, a limit of one bottle per member right now, but um, we'll, 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 we'll just let it go. We'll, we'll, we'll let it go out there and see how it does. This is 182.52, available right now at strathlicker.com forward slash SMWS. Um, and yeah, glorious. Um, if you're not a member, this is a great way to join. Um, just a, a hair over the 180 mark, and if you're a fan of peated whiskey, this is this is a, a very, very good example of one. Hmm. So,
So I hope you've enjoyed the six brand new whiskies today. I'll leave you with a little screen with all of the information uh, as per normal. Uh, they are, as, as I mentioned, already all available. Um, and if you're already counting down the days to the next outturn, well, uh, that is, I believe, going to be on Friday the 3rd of September, um, the Friday just before the Labor Day weekend. Uh, sometimes when long weekends happen, we do we do change the date a little bit, so I'll... I'll um, I'll, I'll find out soon whether that's uh, going to be delayed to the weekend after, but I've, I have a feeling it's probably going to go ahead on the 3rd. And I'll see you guys there. And hopefully some of you I will see at the Outturn preview tastings a couple of days before the first Friday as well. Um, yeah, keep an eye on your emails, local members, for details on the next in-person tastings. Um, yeah, Slanjavar, it's, it's been a pleasure. I'll see you on the next one. Good night. Bye.